So the weather's beautiful and we're finally back to our traditional outdoor unboxing location. You can see it's bright and sunny in Vancouver. Today I'm going to be doing a retro unboxing. I'm going to be doing the Athlon 64 FX51. I actually found a brand new sealed FX51. To give you some idea how old this is, check this out. Oh yeah, there's some dust for you. And I think the back of it is even worse. Can you, you can see the dust build up. You can like write in it. It's disgusting. And we should probably get this in the light to make sure that the, we're recording this with the Minnow HD, which I already unboxed, just to have a look at the HD recording quality of it. Okay, so the FX51 is a socket 940 processor, but not the 940 that we know today, socket AM3. It's the socket 940 that existed at the same time as socket 754. So back when the Athlon 64 was first released, it was released on two sockets, 754 and 940, which was actually an Opteron server socket. So the FX51 is, I believe, the only Athlon processor to have ever been released on socket 940. It is a single core and you know what, without getting too much further into this, why don't we break the seal on this baby? So let me see how we can get this open. AMD hasn't used packaging like this in years. And I hardly even remember how to open these. I think there's like, there's some kind of a trick to it, but since I don't really care and I'm just unboxing it, why don't we just go ahead and slice it open, make things simple on ourselves. Okay, so here we go. This is back like, this is like a dinosaur. Heat pipes didn't even like exist back then. So you can see that this cooler is just like a thin cooler. We're gonna get this out and have a look. So inside it's all nice and shiny and new. This is a brand new processor, sort of. So let's have a look at the heatsink first. This is the Athlon 64 FX51 heatsink. It has a huge copper base. Like this thing is heavy. That is one solid slab of copper all the way around the bottom of it. It has a densely packed fin heatsink for optimal heat dissipation. Remember, this processor does feature a dual channel DDR1 memory controller for state of the art ultra hyper fastness. Okay, it has a three pin fan connector. All right, most, uh, most heat sinks these days included with CPUs now have four pin PWM fan connectors. AMD actually still does use this latching mechanism, although it's been updated a little bit since then. So you use the clip arm on one side and then you, uh, you push this down and then use this clip to attach. Uh, like it looks a little different, but it's the same basic idea. The bottom is not lapped at all. So I'm doing my obligatory finger reflection shot. Even in the bright sun, that is not a very smooth base. So uh, the, the manufacturing processes for those were a little bit different back then as well. Let's see what else we've got in here. So I, okay, we, wow, the CPU actually comes with like a, a motherboard bracket, it would appear. So I'm guessing that the reason for that is that the only motherboards that supported this chip back in the day would have been um, server Opteron motherboards. So you have to put an Athlon 64 bracket on there. So there you have it, that's uh, a socket 939 backplate. The only difference between 939 and AM2 and AM3 in terms of the backplate is that 939 had two through holes and AMX, like all the AM sockets, have four. So they have one, two, three, four. So that's a little bit different. But this layout is actually very much the same. They've gotten rid of this fourth clip at this point. So it includes a couple screws there. Let's see what else we've got. All right. Wow, lots of documentation for a processor. Here we go. All right, so why don't we see? Okay, so first of all, it comes with a three-year limited warranty, which is long up at this point. That's not even relevant. Oh, let's see what the date on this is. So 2003 advanced micro devices, nice. So it's been quite a while since this has been on the market. Oh, then we've got like a big, wow, this is gonna be really big. Okay, I can, I can already tell. Congratulations on your purchase of the new AMD Athlon 64 FX PIB processor in a box, the best solution uh, for, to ensure full compliance with AMD's limited warranty. The heat sink and fan assembly included with the processor must be used. So just in case the warranty was valid, then, you know, there you go, you have to use it. Okay, so PIB, there we go. 
out. So they give you full instructions in a poster size on how to install this processor. And holding up this white piece of paper is very bright. Uh, they give us, so place the back plate, gently lift the motherboard edges over the back plate, push down the processor, and wow, it even goes around to the back. Step 9, step 10, step 11. This is a 16 step program apparently uh, that allows you to install this. Just look at that. It has about eight different languages. Okay, connect the fan. Okay, so there you go. There's the instructions anyway. And let me see if I can sort of figure out how to get this folded back up. It's like gonna go away in the wind here if I don't do this now. Although I hate doing stuff like this on camera because I realize it's very boring for you people. Alright, let's see what else we got in here. Next we have, read this first. Record the serial number of your processor. Never handle the processor with the heatsink fan installed or without it installed. Okay, that's in a bunch of different languages. So these are some warnings on using your processor properly. Ooh, and then we've got an Athlon FX sticker. It's like a metallic sticker. It has metal around the edges and yeah. I remember there was a time when that sticker, having that on your case meant you had like a thousand dollar processor in your case, where now I think the FX51 wouldn't be worth quite so much. Um, let me see what I can... So instant download of a 30 day trial version of the latest video encoding software. Cool. Do you think that would still work? I kind of doubt it. Oh no, there we go. Offer ends March 31st, 2004. Nice. All right, so now let's have a look at the Athlon 64FX itself. So this is not compatible with any modern socket whatsoever. It's a 940 and it's, uh, wow, it's quite a bit different looking than the current chip. So you can see that it actually has like kind of a, a bluish, greenish, grayish um, PCB under the heat spreader itself. And that you can see, wow, the heat spreader is like shoddy almost. It's not even a straight line around the edges. Can you see that on the camera? Uh, it's very hard to say because the Minnow HD has a pretty small screen. But there's all of the printing that's on the heat spreader. And uh, at the bottom we find 940 pins, but not in the AM2 or AM3 configurations. This is in the old 940 configuration. Anyway, thank you for checking out my unboxing, my retro unboxing, of the AMD Athlon 64 FX51.